Good morning, dear friends. Wonderful day today. In God's faithfulness and mercy, He has extended our lives to this new day, that we may live and glorify His name. And so, before we get into the day's activities and work and labor, let us be quiet for a few minutes in the presence of God, listening to His voice. And may His word guide us, and uh, strengthen our faith and lead us in his right path. Today's meditation is taken from the life of Elijah and the scripture verse is 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1. What is so remarkable or noticeable in this verse is the authority of the prophet Elijah. He also had the power to exercise the authority. So many may have authority, but no power. And many has the power, but no authority. Elijah made a bold proclamation in this verse. So the verse 1 reads like this, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. And we see a holy boldness for God expressed and visible in Elijah. Now, in King James, that verse is instead of before whom I, uh, instead of uh, whom I serve, it says before whom I stand. Both are the same meaning. Why do we stand before God? We stand before God to hear His command and then go ahead and do them. And so here is a prophet. And what was the source of Elijah's boldness? The answer is his standing before God. And this standing before God gave him the boldness that is needed to exercise the authority. He stood before God. He stood before God as one who believed in God. The first thing I want to consider that is about Elijah is that he, he believed in God. His faith gave him the power to overcome all fears of King Ahab. Now remember King Ahab. You will notice that King Ahab's uh, source of strength and boldness was not Jehovah God. Though he was the king of Israel, he had no fellowship or oneness with God, Jehovah God. And his source of strength was his um, wife, Jezebel, the wicked idol worshiper who was in control of her husband and thus in control of the affairs of the nation of Israel. She filled the land with idolatry and immorality and all kinds of evil corruption. And she, she killed, she was also a murderer. She killed all the prophets of God. Such a wicked woman. And she was the source of King Ahab's strength. And in the midst of such a scenario, the prophet Elijah lived in the consciousness of the presence of Jehovah God. 
and he knew whom he belonged to. In our time, it was this consciousness of God's presence which gave the boldness to Martin Luther, and thus Reformation was born. And it was this consciousness of God's presence which emboldened Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 27, verse 23. He is now in a ship, in a voyage going to Rome to stand trial before the Caesar. And such a deadly storm hit the ship that Paul said even he despaired of his own life. He thought he was also going to perish. And that, when he, when, when he began to feel that fear, there in verse 23 of chapter 27 of Acts says, An angel of the Lord whom I am, and whom I serve, look at the same confidence and boldness of Elijah, is now seen in the Apostle Paul to declare, before whom I, uh, I am, I stand, and before uh, whom, and, and whom I serve, stood beside me and said to me, do not be afraid, Paul, because you are not going to perish here. You will safely reach Rome, and I am giving into your hand all 279 passengers, their souls are in your hand. And then we know what he did. He strengthened others, encouraged others, and he gave that guidance because initially the captain and the owner of the ship refused to listen to Paul, who wisely advised not to move from one port because such a deadly storm will destroy the ship and probably many lives. And that is the way people of God are treated even today. What do they say? People laugh at it. And yet, when things begin to happen according to the word of men and women of God, then people begin to think the validity of the God in whom we have our trust and our faith. And secondly, he offered himself to God. He believed in God and then he offered himself to God and he was accepted by God. Elijah was a channel through whom the word of the Lord might come to the hearts of a wicked people, through whom the power of God might be manifested. And both happened as we read further on in chapter 18 and 19. He was an earthen vessel in which the divine treasure dwelt according to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. We who trust in Jesus and follow Jesus, doing His will, we are like earthen vessels. We are as weak as an earthen vessel, easily breakable. And yet, in this weak vessels, there is a treasure, a, a heavenly treasure, what is that? The gospel, the treasure of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the life-changing, life-transforming power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is what makes us bold. And so, Elijah means... He was an earthen vessel. And the third thing is, who had a close fellowship with God. First, Elijah believed in God. And then 
Elijah offered himself to God. And now thirdly, Elijah had a close fellowship with God. And my friends, this is important. Not only really, it is, it is, uh, our, our relationship with God will not end by merely believing in Him or uh, offering ourselves casually to serve Him. But then, while serving, it is easy for such people to neglect the close personal relationship and build our uh, relationship with God. This many people neglect, which, uh, uh, which, which uh, uh, land them in difficulties and troubles and temptations. And many mighty men of God uh, have fallen because while they were so busy serving Him, they neglected their personal relationship to be built up. Now, let me encourage all of you who are serving God, who are following Jesus Christ. It is not only good enough for us to do things for God and serve Him. You know, we are satisfied with that. We feel a satisfaction and happy that we serve God so He is pleased. That is not enough, my friends. It is more important for you to build up your personal relationship and your personal walk with God must be so pure and holy. That is the only way you can manifest God's power in you and through you. So always remember this, that fellowship. There was an oneness between Elijah and his God. And Elijah means the Lord is Jehovah. It means the Lord is my God. And he walked in that fellowship and in the consciousness of that relationship. And lastly, and fourthly, Elijah waited on God. Elijah stood before God, the God of Israel, as a servant, ready to take the next order from him and go forth and do them. You know, there is a group called Moravian. They were very strong in the 18th century, 19th century and all. They were, you know, these Moravians who were so committed, they were known for their uh, commitment and their surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ their whole life. Their motto uh, it shows an ox standing between an altar and a plow. And the inscription underneath reads, ready for either. I hope you understood it. An altar is for sacrifice. They are either ready to die and give their life for the Lord Jesus Christ by serving Him. And as long as they live, they are ready to serve Him. Ready for either. How about you? Are you ready for either? And that such men and women are the real disciples of Jesus Christ. And my friends, those of you who are listening to me and who are followers of Jesus Christ, you may be satisfied by doing small little things and then claiming that you serve God. My friends, that is meaningless unless you developed a personal relationship so strong with the Lord Jesus Christ and your surrender is so complete to the Lordship of Jesus, you are ready for either. Either for the altar or for service. And may the Lord give us that courage and boldness and when you maintain that relationship with God, you will have the confidence. You will have the authority. And you will, through that personal relationship, you will have the power to exercise that authority. God bless you as you go forward and uh, do the needful in order for God to be pleased with you.
so that he can trust you and then invest on you his riches and you can be a channel of a blessing to bring the word of god to his people and sometimes their hearts can be hard and also you can be a blessing through whom god can manifest his power like elijah on mount carmel are you ready give yourself to god May the Lord bless you. God wants to raise up more and more of Elijahs, the modern Elijahs. Will you be one? There are many Ahabs and Jezebels trying to destroy the prophets of God. And you must be able to stand before such people and declare boldly until I speak again. There will be raw rain. The Lord bless you and use you. Amen. Father God in heaven, I thank you for your desire for us to be wholly yours. Through whom you can manifest your power and also speak your word. And give to those whose hearts may be hard and yet the word must given out to penetrate the hardness of heart. Thank you, Father, for blessing your people in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a great day. Live for his glory and enjoy the day. Amen.